They'll blanket you in Wi-Fi and profit off the radiation congregation collecting the people for that Satan. I keeps it blazing. Cause I can read between the lines. I ain't blind. We unwind what they're really saying. Genetically modify what you're tasting. Don't need that cottage promise. So now you live up in your mom's basement. Redesign time so your mind is always wasted. Program to crave the basics. Keep the beta in stasis. Pay the state, kid. You're in debt for being born. Messengers are mourn. Just the price for being warned. Don't be alarmed, disconnect from their machinations, stop subscribing to the folly. Glued to these screens, it's a plot to drop the IQ. Fighting amongst each other over rumors that don't like you. Prefer us trapped in melancholy with the wood ones of holly. Suggestions that obliterate to camouflage the folly. Attempt the mental robbery. Execute it sloppily. The popper see this mockery and whack the top with me. Put the hands up to touch the Akasha. Cause you know deep down there's something bigger than your wallet. So we eternal balance of all that is good, true, and beautiful, friends. The middle path is the way of every rogue warrior. And here tonight on Middle Path, we are blessed to have the one and only Interversian mystic of the most mind-opening metaphysics and wavelengths one can find, and one of the few who truly embodies a powerhouse of presence and depth of thought that dives deeper than most rabbit holes and beyond the font of most wells. He is an I Ching oracle reader who brings a heart-centered connection to channel truth into this realm from being beyond, and he is the soul-guided badass who weaves and wanders farther than most to bring us all the choicest nuggets of goodness and reminders of our never-ending essence, anchoring it all together right here and right now. It's Chance Garden of Innerverse Podcast. Chance, welcome to your first appearance on Middle Path, by the way, and how are you doing tonight? I feel good. I was just telling you off the air that woke up kind of pissed off. <laughs> There's a lot of <laughs> stuff in the world that deserves some anger, actually. And a friend of mine in our Telegram group mentioned feeling similar to that. And I was like, yeah, I vibe with you, but I was keeping that to myself. And you mentioned to him to help him channel his rage, work in his garden. And uh, so I did the same thing today. I took off from work to do it from the office job I work at. And man, really good choice, really good choice. I spent hours outside, no shirt on, getting vitamin D, uh, took care of a project. Uh, had a really bad overgrown raised bed that needed to just be totally torn out and started over and it'd been years overgrowing so i know this is all tangential but the point is uh like some kind of blockage in my personal environment was solved by taking that advice instead of just slogging through another day at uh, a job just trading my time for money while i don't even feel good about it so yeah i'm feeling good now was outside a lot and ready to have some fun talking about one of my favorite topics, which is music festivals. I got one of my favorite festival t-shirts on here and uh, music festivals and psychedelic vampires, yes. <laughs> kind of like psychic vampires, but psychedelic vampires. Yeah, they're similar, but there's a, there's an additional like vector here. <laughs> it's interesting. Well, I'm glad that I could be there to help with that suggestion. I always try to tell people to go to go outside, spend time in nature. They've proven benefits of it are beyond our understanding often there's there's transfer of energy that's going on measurably like even if you're not a woo woo person and you're into just the materialist science like that's happening there's like all kinds of um like bacteria and probiotic things that go on too when you make contact with earth uh and that anger right you're channeling it into something productive but you're also like allowing the the earth and the channel and the grounding to um like literally take that because sometimes this shit that's going on, like you said, there's a lot going on to make us angry, but I think there's also a lot going on to like give us anger that isn't even ours, you know, and especially if you're even slightly, even if you're not <laughs> slightly empathic, but if, especially if you are sensitive or empathic, who knows what this like various EMF wavelengths, I, we already know they've admitted to like um, testing things on us, like via Facebook and other screens and technologies and so we know the the various technologies exist and i just sometimes don't know and like am i suddenly like full of rage randomly because it's being like beamed out you know like i i don't put it past anything so i just it's a really nice i saw the mayor fix. of new york telling people he's going to get french he's going to give them french fries <laughs> and a, a hamburger if they get their shot so and so ridiculous. like it's coming from the electronics for sure because that definitely made me mad yeah that was just a few hours ago that's a it's clown world out there i agree but 
you know what? When I'm outside, it's just sunshine and bird song. Yes. None of that is happening. The phone's inside. So yeah, there's something to it. Absolutely. <laughs> there's something about the technology influencing us here. I mean, I kind of cut into your thought, but I was just like, no, yeah, she's right. right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you're, you're like able to get uh, messages more clearly too. Like whether you think you're a person in connection with like, you know, higher, higher self or higher entities or whatever you want to call it like it's still even even your subconscious can speak to you more clearly in that sort of a space when you're out and like more centered and balanced and grounded so it's it's just a good practice it's a practice and uh we're gonna do actually a practice together speaking of practices but before we do that i do want to give a quick shout out to everybody who listens to rogueways or middle path or who's watching right now or chatting along i really have had so much gratitude lately just for the awesome community that we have and you know, you guys, um, really, I, I thank you for being exactly who you are and for being here or anywhere you are and, and bringing that energy you bring. You know, I notice, uh, especially in the, the Telegram chat that we have, and um, Chance has a killer te Telegram chat as well. And there's just this very higher minded. It's not like stodgy, like more oh, academic. It's just like higher minded and thoughtful discussion. And even when people disagree, they're adults about it. And it's like, it's so refreshing. And so I just wanted to give a shout out to everybody listening because you guys are all badasses of a very specific breed. And I salute you for that. Um, and if you're not yet in the rogue.locals.com community, come join us there. It's a great way to support Rogue and be in the community. Join the Telegram community. Whatever does does it for you, just, you know, stay connected because we love you. And uh, also on rogueways.org, got blessings, got jewelry, got crystals that have blessings infused in them. I can help you with spiritual guide work and tarot readings. And uh, I write awesome books that you might want to buy. So go check all of that out. So much love to you all. Uh, and one more thing I want to share from uh, someone who's been on the show many, many times, not Middle Path yet, but Rogue Ways many times, and wrote a nice little song. And I'm so sorry, Chance, you won't be able to hear this, but uh, everyone else will. <laughs> I'll just do some uh, research and pull up some stuff for screen share as well. Okay. <laughs> you just holler at me when you're ready. Word. I'll listen to it later. Thank you. Here we go for the rest of us. This is Claude Furry. Bringing it. I might be way too high. I don't know. But anyway. Whatever you do, just listen to you. Oh, oh Lindsay. Talking all the ways. And oh, she knows the truth. something <laughs> i love it it was impromptu it was very very inspired and obviously true so thank you to claude for setting that beautiful video if anybody else has any fan fiction or music or art that they want to share dude go for it i love it uh and all right so i am gonna just ask you chance what your idea is about how this uh, episode came about. Like, why why did we decide to do this episode? There's a lot of things, I guess, but I like to talk about festivals. <laughs> I like to talk about sort of counterculture things. And the topic of psychic vampirism is also a really interesting one, especially because with you, getting into it with you, not even something I've got into on my show enough for my own liking. But with you, I think we can look at this from some other sides and angles that are a little more than just the interpersonal individual to inter individual psychic vampirism, the run of the mill stuff. Because we we all have those behavior tendencies baked in. Uh, it's just natural. And it's about noticing it and going, oh, why am I trying to make this, pers this person conform to how I want them to feel? Because that's almost the like, the basic description of it uh, for the unconscious usage. It's like, 
you want to make them feel bad for you or something. It's usually something like that or feel like they wronged you. Uh, Make them, it's all very related on a sort of spiritual metaphysical sense to even the legal commerce system, black magic, because any form of vampirism is almost like a creditor and a debtor. I'm just thinking of that right now, but you're trying to make people feel like they owe you credit or they have debt to you uh, in a most basic general sense, but it comes across in a lot of ways. I mean, it can, it's just a feeling thing, a feeling transfer. Um, But there's, so that's a basic behavior pattern we're all capable of. The thing is that goes unrealized that there's also parasitic psychic vampirism, which means that you are vampirizing yourself, which is the ba- the best way to describe it would be like, you're so starved for food that you start gnawing on your own arm to eat it. And so it's like a natural reaction to being very spiritually disconnected, very unself aware mm. to uh, then start consuming your own light from within essentially, because you're not finding you're not finding the actual source of like, you're not hooked up to the circuitry. You know, you're wearing rubber soled shoes, you're walking around outside, but you're never even actually touching anything other than the, the shoes and you're holding the electronic devices and you're part of this other grid, this closed loop circuitry grid. That's like what the matrix is. It has nothing to do with the entire reality you're in, not, not actually being real. It's more like, you're disconnected from the organic matrix. Matrix just means womb. Yeah. It's literally what the word it comes means. comes from the so, word mother. <laughs> exactly. It's like exactly. The, the womb in which everything is it exists. Yeah. And that's like, so like we're in a matrix, no matter how you want to cut it. Uh, like you said, you know, but the organic yeah. one is a little bit better in my opinion, like you're saying, than the, than the inorganic constructed. That's the cosmic egg back there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that. That's where we're at. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, I love so, this thing of self vampirism too. Like I hadn't ever really thought of it that way, but you're right. It's the exact same cycle or the exact same impetus and the exact same energy and conclusion. It's gross. Yeah, and if you uh, go really far into that realm, you're going to have some very bad feelings. Uh, not that you won't have a pendulum swing of emotions in any t- any time of your life. You always will, but you know that goes to very dark places. I think that's where people actually, this is kind of more wild and out there, but I think that's why sometimes people die when you wouldn't have expected them to, when they're like healthy and young and like some crazy accident that's like final destination happens to them. I think it's not always across the board, but I think I've personally witnessed some cases where a person's will to live was so low anyway, even though they weren't like outwardly suicidal, that it made sense that they left. And so what that, what that, that's all speculative. You know, a lot of this conversation is going to be highly speculative. That's the fun of it. And I want to like always disclaimer that we're only able to describe these things from our own vector of experience. Right. But I think I've seen something like that before and what could possibly play into it, especially when it's like a weird fate death, like, um, you know, crazy car accident or something that just seems like it should have never happened. You have to maybe question did, other things come in. Are there vultures here? Like, because once you've put out the signal of your self harm is, is your vibe is self harm, then do other things swoop in and they also also start to feed. So that's part of why you call it parasitic. You don't just call it self vampirism. You call it parasitic because you literally, it's just like when you eat stuff that, that gives your body the conditions for bad parasites to thrive. You can do that on a psychic level. And, um, You know, and then there's, of course, things being injected in you that are almost like parasitic code programs, like from the screens, just the, uh, (laughs) the constant rage you would have to feel regardless of what side you were on of any particular issue. So many ways that we have been divided. Like I saw a friend post a quote on Facebook and the quote was fine, even though it came from Elon. (laughs) And I wanted to quote there, like, you know, that guy's the fucking basically an antichrist up in here, right? And like, it was Facebook. And I, I realized, because I've been off Facebook for many, many days due to Telegram being so lit. I was like, dude, this is not me. There's something in this program that made me want to co at this guy who's a good friend and I have nothing really against what he said. And I just didn't, I just refrained from commenting. There was like, good job. I wanted to make it about <laughs> like, hey, you're wrong for even quote Elon, and here's why that quote isn't exactly that good but you know i was going to follow it up with like but i knew how you meant it but that's just combative right and uh 
you don't see a lot of that on the telegram groups. That's for sure. Yeah. It's almost like there's something in that embedded in the frequency there. That's like in training you towards the, uh, be combative about this. Just, yeah, it's weird. And then it's like what we were text, talking about earlier no and like, that's what they yeah. are. They've, they've told us they're doing that on Facebook. So that's one place where I think we've consented if we're there and therefore it can happen to us, you know? Exactly. That's a good point. Yeah. That's disgusting. Um, and like, I like that, um, uh, idea you presented too, which is very true physically and on every single level on every body that we have, you know, our physical, our mental, our spiritual, our energetic, all of it needs an environment in order for certain things to thrive. Your environment, your terrain theory, here we go, like is true. And you know, it's for, it's for everything. Everything has its nature and what it can do. And then the nurture that helps certain things come out. Even our genetic code, people think it's like written in stone and it's fate. Like this is your genetic code. No, even that is environmentally based. You have environmental triggers that call out certain uh, parts of your uh, genetic code. And it's the same with this. Like the parasite can't live if the environment is too clean or too pure or just not the right environment for it. So you're you're able to control that that side of it at least, right? For everything, for everything that exists. So it's a really good point to make about the environment. And um, would you like to now go into uh, a practice for people in relation to this? And if so, I would like to say to the YouTube people, that I love you very much. And I hope you come over to Rockfin because I'm about to cut you off because Middle Path is a Rockfin only show. And I just- Yeah, get over to, to Rockfin, yo. Yeah. Dirty YouTubers. I just dropped the link. Love you. Come over, it's free. <laughs> you don't have to pay anything. You just come over. <laughs> All right. So I guess I'll say goodbye to the YouTubers now. See you guys I on Rockfin. I love Rockfin. I'm, I'm really digging it. I just showed Rose and Rose Triple Seven and Beth Martins how to do some Rockfin stuff. So the- uh, the truther tribe over there is taking over big time. <laughs>